Li Jianhuang, whose pen name is Xiao Chao, is a Shanghai-based Chinese freelance internet writer and a member of the Inde Independent Chinese Pen Center. In August 2002, Ms. Li founded the websites Enlightenment Forum and Free China Forum, both of which are now blocked. She has been subjected to intense police harassment for her critical writings online and for peaceful dissident activities. With Penn's help, on April 28, 2008, Li Jianhuang was allowed to leave China to accept a fellowship in Stockholm, but only after signing a statement agreeing not to return to China, a move Penn likened to deportation or banishment. This past December, the Independent Chinese Penn Center planned to hold its annual awards banquet in Beijing and present awards to Ms. Li and Liao Hu, whose work you heard earlier, in recognition of their efforts to expand the boundaries for freedom to write in China. The authorities prevented that dinner from taking place, calling ICPC members and warning them not to attend, posting guards outside the homes of ICPC officers and detaining both Ms. Li and Mr. Liao. I'm going to read an excerpt from Li Jian Huang's first-hand account of those events. From Days of Illegal Detention, translated from the Chinese by Mei Li Chai. Once again, on the afternoon of December 14th, I was interrogated by agents at the Pudong Subdistrict Security Bureau. After two hours of small talk, and after they'd gotten a good sense of my personal affairs, they finally got to the point. We received a notice from the police in Beijing. The Independent Chinese Pen Center is having an award ceremony on December 22nd in Beijing. Did you know about this? I replied that I didn't. I said I'd heard that the board of directors were talking about such a thing, but I didn't know about a time frame, nor had anyone told me, nor had anyone invited me to participate. It looks like you know more than I do. They acted as though they didn't believe me and said if it were true that no one had notified me, that was for the best. The Beijing police hoped we would prevent you from participating, so we want you to promise that you will not go to Beijing before the end of the month. I replied, I'm a law-abiding citizen. If the law forbids something, I will certainly obey. I then suggested if, after their investigation, they discovered that the Penn meeting is against the law, I would like the Shanghai Public Security Bureau of the Pudong Subdistrict Security Bureau to please issue an official statement explaining, quote, following an investigation by the Public Security Bureau, the Independent Penn Awards meeting of December 22nd in Beijing is against the law. So we have suggested to Li Jianhuang that she cannot participate. I told them that if they would write such this notice, I would certainly not go. So then if my friends in Beijing did invite me, I would have a reason to refuse them, I explained. The head of the security team, <coughs> Director Huang, smiled awkwardly and said, not all things require an official document. Then he repeated the same old line I'd heard before. We hope that you do not go out of concern for you. We don't want you to be influenced by bad people. He took a step forward and added, if you don't heed us, and insist on going to Beijing, I'm afraid we'll have to do what we did last year when you went to Qingdao and invite you to come back here. Director Huang concluded, for the next few days, we'll have a car posted outside your door. If you need to go anywhere, our car can take you. Five days later, I was helping my family pack to move to a different apartment. I was carrying stuff out the door when I came face to face with several security bureau agents blocking the hallway. They told my father they wanted to put me into a government guest house for a few days in order to conduct an investigation for our benefit. I was then indeed detained as the government's guest in room 336 of a local chain hotel. They added two cots to the room and in the evening two female police officers slept in my room. The next day, Director Huang moved us upstairs to a business suite. After changing rooms, Director Huang wanted to talk to me. He again asked me not to publish anti-government or anti-party articles on the web. He said, if I promised not to publish these articles ever again, if I did not associate with friends I'd made on the internet anymore, and if I found a good job and lived peacefully, they could consider letting me live a normal life. They could even help me find a job. If I didn't agree to these conditions, my family would have no peace. 
I said, I don't need you to help me find a job. I need you to give me back my freedom and also guarantee that from now on you won't violate or limit my freedom. For the next three days, there were four to six national security agents and an assistant public security, public security bureau watching me at all times. It rained continuously, and only the outer room in the suite had a window. The inner room had none. The air became stale. The light was dim. I lost all sense of time. Finally, on the afternoon of the 23rd, Director Huang again visited and said he'd interact with me a little before sending me home. I said, I've grown accustomed to this place. The food's good. I don't have to worry about cooking. With patience, one could live here for the rest of one's life. However, I still wanted him to explain to me this unlawful arrest. And I said, I reserve the right to sue you in the future. <laughs> Director Huang slipped away, leaving one man and one woman from the police as well as two guards from national security. They said the boss had said they could send me home at 9 p.m. After dinner, they waited until exactly 9 before they let me go downstairs. They checked us out at the front desk, and I walked out of the hotel's big gate, finally breathing fresh air. I asked the two national security agents, am I free now? If I'm free, I don't need you to take me home. I'd like to walk outside. I can call a taxi and go home by myself. However, they said that the boss had called my family and insisted that the security agent's job wouldn't be done until they brought me home. I didn't want them to get into trouble. I just didn't want to get into their car. They drove me to my family's new apartment and insisted on accompanying me to the front door. I didn't allow them inside. I'm here now, I said. Please go back. Then I closed the door. Thank you.